We have one more application of binary decision variables that we want to cover, and that's what we call the, the fixed cost problem. If you remember back to one of the first spreadsheets that I used at the beginning of the course, we had a little decision model that involved making a decision about building a, a grandfather clock, I guess it was. And the, the problem was complicated slightly by the fact that there was a fixed cost associated with setting up to produce any clocks. And it was handled in that spreadsheet by an if statement that ensured that the, the costs charged were a combination of fixed and variable unless the production quantity was zero, in which case there was no, no fixed cost. Well, that's kind of an ugly way to, to handle it to, because it creates a problem that's not only nonlinear, it's discontinuously nonlinear and makes something that's really very hard for solver to deal with. The way we deal with that is that we introduce a binary variable because there is a binary decision involved. So in fact, there are two decisions involved. One in that case would have been how many clocks to make, including the possibility of zero. And the other decision, not an independent decision by the way, but a, another decision would be whether or not to actually pay the fixed cost to set up and go into the business in the first place. So that fixed cost related decision is binary, zero, one in nature. And it makes the a model a lot cleaner because then the fixed cost attaches to the binary decision and the variable cost attaches to the uh, production quantity decision. So let's look at a little example here in the PowerPoint and the spreadsheet is on Blackboard as well to look at. This is a, com a product mix problem where a company wants to decide how much of each of three products they want to make uh, given the usual constraints on resources and the data is given here. So you can see that each of these products requires a certain amount of time in three different resource areas and that we're limited by the total resources available in those areas. And we see that each product generates a certain amount of uh, profit or contribution margin. So pretty clearly our objective is to maximize our profit subject to the uh, resource constraints available. What's different in this problem is that we have a fixed setup cost. So if you want to produce product one, for example, you've got to send people back to storage to get out the jigs and fixtures for it, bring them out, set them up, test them out, and turn on the, the production. So there's a fixed cost associated with the decision to make any product at all. And we have to figure out a way to do with that, a way to do, deal with that. And the way we're going to deal with it is to introduce another set of decision variables. So we have the conventional ones of how many units of each product to produce, but the setup um, cost will be attached to an, another set of decision variables, one of which will, which will be binary, and tells us whether or not to pay the setup charge. So we're going to have six decision variables in this problem, three x variables, which are the quantities to produce, and three y variables, which are the decisions to pay the setup cost or not. So when we have those decision variables, the objective function is going to include all of them. And we can see that the unit profit multiplied by the production quantity decisions will combine with the cost, hence the negative sign, multiplied by the binary yes, no decision to, to do the setup or not. So this will be the complete objective function for this problem and will give us the net profit after setup costs are paid. The other constraints you should be familiar with by now, they're simple resource constraints. We multiply the resources required times the production quantities on the left-hand side and say that those have to be less than equal to our, our right-hand sides. So that's all pretty conventional. We know how to do that. We do need non-negativity on the production quantities and we do need the restriction that the Y variables are binary. So I've already set that up for you to this stage. So this is what this would look like as a typical product mix problem where we now have added three binary decision variables that have fixed costs attached to them in the objective function. Now the question is what would happen if you ran solver on this? Well I can tell you what would happen. Solver would build as many units of each product as it could subject to the resource constraints and it would happily pay no setup charges because there's nothing in this model that requires it to. So we need to put something in the model that requires that the setup charge be paid before anything can be produced. So what we have actually is an example of conditionality that we've already discussed in the context of, of binary variables. 
So I'm going to skip down here. All right, so if both of these decision variables, sets of decision variables were binary, we would enforce conditionality by saying that x sub i is less than or equal to y sub i. In other words, if y is 0, you didn't pay the setup charge, then x has to be 0 as well. You can't make any. The problem is that when y is 1, x can be anything up to 1. Well, that's not good enough because we're not just going to build one unit. We're going to build quite a few units up to whatever capacity constraints we run into. So to make this equation work, it works OK at 0, but it doesn't work OK when y is 1, we need to introduce a scaling factor. And the scaling factor is what we call the big M value. And I'm going to put it in this way. OK, so as long as M now is big enough that it's larger than any value of X that you're likely to encounter, then this works correctly. If Y is 0, X will be 0. If Y is 1, then X can't exceed M. If you have a specific uh, capacity constraint on X, you can apply it here. You can put it right in that number and kill two birds with one stone. But in this case, we don't have explicit constraints on quantities of X's. They're determined indirectly through other resource constraints. So that'll be handled elsewhere. We can just go ahead and put in any number here as long as it's big enough. Well, what's big enough? Quite often you can just eyeball it. If you want to be really elegant, we can uh, calculate what the smallest number that would work will be, and I've done it here, and you can look at the problem yourself if you want to see where those came from, try and figure out what I did. But for our purposes, we just really need to, to make sure that we have a number that's larger than, than these values, and then we're okay. So we're going to use this form of the constraint. What we'll do is we'll just shift this over to the left-hand side here, so we'll say x sub i minus my sub i must be less than or equal to zero. So let's go ahead and put that into the spreadsheet. And rather than use these numbers, I'm just going to use an arbitrarily large number, say 1,000. OK, so we need a constraint on product 1. So we'll say 1x1 one one minus 1,000y1. And the left-hand side will be the sum product. I'll just drag that down. It's less than or equal to. I'll drag that down and our value was 0. The next one for product 2, x2 minus 1,000y2 must be less than or equal to 0. And finally, x3 minus 1,000y3 less than or equal to 0. All right, I've now ensured that I cannot produce anything here unless I have a 1 in the corresponding cell here. Let's go to Solver. Starting off with a blank slate, we're going to try to maximize our profit by changing these cells subject to some constraints. The first one that we need to consider is that these variables here must be binary. It's OK. We'll add one more. And these are all less than or equal to constraints, so that's really easy. We just do this. And we're done. Non-negativity applies. Simplex LP applies. Now, for integer and binary problems, always look in the options box. This ignore integer constraints box must not be checked. Sometimes it is by default. Here it's not, so we're OK. Solve the problem. We get a solution. And we see that all the constraints are observed. We check here and observe that these are, in fact, binary values, so it's operating correctly. We can see that when no setup charge was paid for product one, we didn't produce any, so that's good. These numbers here are not integer numbers. That may or may not be a problem for you. We could have put an integer constraint on those if it were important to us, but for now, we'll ignore it. OK, so that's been a quick overview of how we use a conditionality constraint on a binary logic variable to cover the fixed costs in a problem of this nature.